Ladies and gentlemen, I have made a mistake. A mistake that has now cost me the love of my partner. So let's move on with the video. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Look what you've done! <laughs> On today's video, we will be discussing this. Oh, f Maximum junk, maximum junk. There it is. First try. So as some of you know, I posted a while ago on Reddit asking people what I should do with my big red button. My big red button which will now mysteriously magically appear in my hand this big red button and it, originally i did it for a gimmick so that hey you press the button disco ball and lights and curtains stuff happens but then i posted it places and it got like a decent amount of attention and then i was like maybe i should look into other people that have made their own retractable disco ball surprisingly not a lot shows up. So then I was like, damn, I should make this a dedicated video. So now I'm gonna hand it over to past Thomas, who will explain how it go brewer. Hello and welcome to my men's planing lecture on today's episode, Disco Ball Dispenser. As you can see here, Disco Ball. As you can see here, a thing that makes the Disco Ball go up and down. It's composed of an end stop switch, which is there to stop it from destroying all my hopes and dreams in one fell swoop. My version of this will be powered by a lithium ion battery, which you can see right there. Uh, yours doesn't have to, you can just plug in a 12 volt power supply, that would also work. Uh, then we have a motor, which goes brr. Uh, we have a motor driver, which makes the motor go brr. And then we have the, uh, the D1 Mini which tells the motor driver to tell the motor to go brr. And then the end stop switch tells the, tells the D1 Mini to tell the, the motor driver to stop going brr. Yes? Thank you for coming. On to the card. Very knowledgeable that bearded Thomas, but uh, he should leave the transitions to me. Anywho, let's get into card. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't put a lot of work into the card, I kind of just measured all the stuff I needed to use and just made sure I have a plate that has space for those things. The hardest thing about it was how to incorporate the end stop switch which I needed for the disco ball to stop crushing into itself because time based things don't hold time very well. I opted for like a fancy ring situation and it like mostly works so we'll go with that. After everything was designed, everything was printed, and then came time to do the electronics. How difficult are the electronics, you might ask? Do I even explain them in that video? Hold up. The electronics are like exactly the same as a previous video I've done, but I have no idea whether I actually expect I gained a subscriber. Go me. So I didn't actually explain the electronics in that video, which is a problem because I I linked somebody to that video to explain the electronics just today. I have an idea. I'll do the electronics now and then hopefully when that person sees the video I linked them, he'll realize that I don't mention the electronics and he'll like, subscribe and hit the dingly bell as everybody should. And then he'll get a notification when this video comes out and then he'll get the actual electronics he needs to make the thing he wants to make. Flawless logic from Unbearded Thomas. Let's move on. Okay, we will be using the ever popular 12 volt motor driver, a D1 mini microcontroller, and one of these 12 volt motors that have a gear reduction. So this one is a 12 volt DC motor that goes at 70 revolutions per minute which makes this end very strong at pulling heavy things up. You'll also need two limit switches. You don't necessarily need these ones, but these are just the ones I've got on hand. One final piece of the puzzle is two of these 10K resistors. I'm just gonna lay things out here so that it's easier for me to explain things. 
So first of all, we're going to get a 12 volt power supply into the motor driver. And then from here, we can take the five volt power output and take it to the D1 Mini. And let's also grab the ground for the D1 Mini. Now let's connect the motor to the motor driver like so. And now we're going to take D3 from the D1 Mini and plug it into here. And those are the pins that we will be using for controlling the motor and its direction. I'm using pins D3 and D2 for that, but you can do whichever. I'm going to take a ground up here and connect the resistors to it. The pins I'm using for my buttons are seven and five. So these resistors are going to connect to ground up here and then down here, plug into D7 and D5. And then I'm going to take this free volt signal from here and run it all the way down to my switches where I will plug one to each. From there, we can take the other lead from here and plug it into this one. And we can take the other lead from this button and plug it into this one. And that is our entire schematic. It looks a little complicated because I'm very bad at explaining things. One thing you'll notice is on my actual working model, I've replaced this switch with a button that I can press whenever I feel like the ball has gotten to the end. I only really use this for configuring where the bottom is and where the ball should stop. Apart from that, it's kind of useless. If you are coming here from my curtains video, you will remember that I had a rant about how a button is triggered without me even triggering. Coming close to it and it's like, whoa, no, 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 you're pressing all of the buttons. Well, that, that was explained in the comments by a lovely person who explained to me that bodies make electricity too, and that when bodies get too close to things, it triggers them. Uh, the way to fix that is actually by adding these resistors. It sort of filters out the noise from the wires essentially being antennas and it makes it work. So yeah, 10k resistors. I hope that explains everything and let's move on with the video. Okay, hip hip hooray, the electronics are done, things are soldered together, the wires are touching. Hopefully only the wires that are supposed to be touching because if the other wires are touching when they're not supposed to be touching, well then you're releasing magic smoke and that's like really difficult to put back in. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Let's move on to the code, which is very easy to mess up, but we have Control-Z. Unlike life, where I can't get my beard back. The code is honestly not that difficult. I'm going to ESP Home, I'm getting the template for covers, and then I'm realizing that it's more difficult than I think, so then, I'm going into the code for my curtains and I'm copying the code from my curtains. I'm pasting it in. I'm removing the bits that don't need to be there anymore because there's only one disco ball and there's three curtains so I can trim it all down. And then hey presto, it goes up and down. Not gonna lie, I kind of had like a lot of problems with Home Assistant and ESP Home because recently they've like merged their repositories and it was really fucking annoying because I had to switch shit over and now there's this fantastic bag that just duplicates the pill dispenser in my in my integrations tab. Don't know why, but it's there. There is now like 4,500 pill dispensers. I don't know why. I don't even have an integration for them anymore. I'm a system bug report over. Let's continue. Now that that's all sorted out, I can go into red node and make myself a little button that I press that dispenses at the right amount. And then I can press it again and it closes it. So that whenever I need disco time, it is just a button away. And that was it. I thought I was done. I thought the project was over. Of course not, because I posted it to Reddit and all I got was, hey, it doesn't spin. 
So now I need to find a way of making it spin. And then another person was like, well, yeah, but you have a disco ball floating in your office. All you're really doing is just lowering it down slightly. But everybody can see that you have a floating disco ball. Me and Reddit have a very complicated relationship in that they give me dopamine and I post shit on there to get dopamine. But most of the time they hate the stuff I make. So then I make more stuff to annoy them, but then they hate me more. I should quit Reddit. But dopamine. Eh, I'll think about it later. Anywho, if you are yourself interested in making a disco ball dispenser um, and then posting it on Reddit just to receive tons of hate, feel free. Um, there's links in the description for the 3D model of the thing that I made for it, which honestly, I don't see why you would want to. If you're making it yourself, you'd probably wanna design your own one for whatever means of powering you're doing it with. Thank you for stopping by. Join me next time where we find out whether my partner still loves me despite my beard being gone. Toodaloo.